Here we have another sample question related to network diagrams. You are a project manager for a new road work project. You have determined the following dependencies. When I look at the rest of the question, I can see it lists activities, relationships, and durations. From this, I know I need to build a network diagram. I begin with start. The question says, Activity A is the first activity with a duration of five days. When I continue to skim the question, I see that both activity B and activity C are successors to activity A, and I fill in their durations. Activity D is a successor to activity B with a duration of two days. Activity E is a successor to both B and C with a duration of six days. F is a successor to D and E with a duration of nine days. G is a successor to E with a duration of eight days. H is a successor to both F and G with a duration of four days. The project is finished once activity H is completed. I now have my network diagram. The first question I see, what is the project duration? Another question, what is the duration of the critical path? To solve both of these questions, I do the same thing. I do what's called a forward pass. I begin with activity A. I ask, what is the earliest activity A may begin? Since activity A is the first activity, the earliest it may start is day one. If it runs five days, day one, day two, day three, day four, the earliest it may finish is day five. Activity B may begin the day after activity A ends, therefore B may begin on day six. The earliest B may finish is day eight. How did I get that? It begins on day six, it runs day six, day seven, day eight. Activity C may begin after activity A finishes. The earliest C could begin is day six. If it runs seven days, the earliest it could finish is day 12. Now, how did I get 12? I take six plus the duration of seven, subtract one, I get day 12. The earliest activity D may begin is the day after activity B ends. Therefore, the early start of activity D is nine. If it runs two days, day nine, day 10, the earliest it may finish is day 10. Activity E is a little trickier. Activity E may begin after activity B and C have both completed. I look at the early finish of B, which is day eight, the early finish of C, which is day 12. 12 is higher, therefore the earliest E may begin is day 13. If it's six days long, 13 plus six minus one, day 18. F may begin after both D and E have completed. I look at the early finish of D and E, 10 and 18. 18 is the larger number, Therefore, the earliest F could begin would be the following day, day 19. If F runs nine days, 19 plus nine minus one, day 27. The earliest G may begin is the day after E finishes. G, the earliest it may begin is day 19. If it runs eight days, 19 plus eight minus one, day 26 is the earliest G may finish. For H to begin, both F and G need to be finished. I look at the early finish of F, day 27, the early finish of G, day 26. Day 27 is a higher or a bigger number. Therefore, the earliest H could begin would be day 28. If H runs four days, 28 plus four minus one, the earliest H could finish is day 31. Since H is the last activity for the project, 
The project duration is 31 days. The next question, what is the duration of the critical path? It's the same answer, 31 days. The critical path is what drives the duration of the project. The next question we see, what is the float of activity B? First, let's ask, what does the word float really mean? For me, float means flexibility. When we think of the critical path method, float is the difference between the late numbers and the early numbers. Therefore, to calculate float, we need to do a backward pass at least as far as activity B. To begin the backward pass, I start with my last activity, H, and I bring down my early finish of 31 days and list that as my late finish. Now I ask, what is the latest H may start with a duration of four days to finish by day 31? Mathematically, I say 31, minus 4 plus 1 gives me day 28. This means activity H, the latest it may begin, is day 28 if it will fit finish by day 31. Let's now look at activity F. I'm asking what's the latest F may finish and H begin by day 28? That would be one day earlier, day 27. If F is nine days long, what's the latest F may start? I take 27 minus nine, add one. The latest F may start is day 19. If it has a duration of nine days and its late finish is day 27. I move on to activity G. The latest G may finish is day 27 if H will start by day 28. What's the latest G may start? 27 minus 8 plus 1. It would be day 20. The latest G may start is day 20 if it has a duration of 8 and a late finish of day 27. You can see I'm working in columns. I go to activity D and I ask, what's the latest D may finish? And activity F begin on day 19. The late finish of activity D would be day 18. If activity D is two days long, the latest it could start would be day 17. Mathematically, 18 minus 2 plus 1, day 17. Activity E is a little trickier. I'm asking, what's the latest E may finish? And F may start by day 19, and G start by day 20. I look at the number 19 and the number 20. I take the smaller of these two numbers, 19, and subtract 1. The latest E may finish is day 18 if F were to begin on day 19 or G by day 20. Let's go back to activity E. What's the latest E could start? I take 18, subtract 6, add 1. I get day 13. What does this really mean? It means the latest E may start is day 13 if it has a duration of 6 and a late finish of day 18. Activity B is a little trickier. I ask what's the latest B may finish for D to have a late start of day 17 and E a late start of day 13. I look at the smaller number, day 13, subtract 1. The latest B may finish is day 12 if D is to start by day 17 and E by day 13. Looking back at activity B, what's the latest B may start? 13 minus 3 plus 1 is 10. What does this really mean? It means the latest B may start is day 10 if it has a duration of 3 and a late finish of day 12. Now I ask, what's the latest C may finish? I look at E, 
E has a late start of day 13, meaning the latest C can finish is day 12. What's the latest C may start? I say 12 minus 7 plus 1, day 6. Activity A, again a little trickier. What's the latest A may finish for B to start by day 10 and C by day 6? I look at the smaller number, day 6. The latest A may finish is day 5. If A is 5 days long, 5 minus 5 plus 1, the latest A may start is day 1. Now really, to answer the question, what is the float of activity B, I didn't need to figure out the late start and finish of A or C. I just needed to go back as far as B. The float of activity B is the flexibility of activity B. It's how much flexibility it has between its early and late numbers. The equation float is the late finish of activity B, which is day 12, minus the early finish of activity B, which is day 8. 12 minus 8 equals 4 days. What does this really mean? It means B may slip up to four days from its early numbers before it would hit or affect the critical path or the project duration of 31 days. Let's say we get another question. It asks, what is the free float of activity B? Free float is how much an activity can slip from its early finish before it affects the earliest start of any successor. If we visualize the free float of activity B is how much B may slip from its early finish of day 8 before it would affect the earliest start of activity D, day 9. If we look at the equation, it would be 9 minus 8 minus 1 equals 0. What does this really mean? It means if B slips at all, B will start to eat into D's float. Let's say we get another question. The question asks, which activities are critical? What the question is really asking, which activities are on the critical path? How do we know an activity is on the critical path? We know this if its late numbers are the same as its early numbers. Here we can see activity A, C, E, F, and H are all on the critical path because their late finish numbers are the same as their early finish numbers. The last question we'll look at today for this example. If management says to end the project by day 25, what is the project float? The way I like to visualize this, management is saying activity H needs to end by day 25. To calculate float, late finish minus early finish, 25 days minus 31 days equals a negative 6 days. Why is the answer negative? Because the plan we created shows the project finishing in 31 days. Management says to finish no later than 25 days. Therefore, if we stay on the plan we have created, we will be six days late, a negative six days of float. I hope this example helped you as you're preparing for the PMP or the CAPM exam. Check back later for more examples. Thank you.